And first at 6 o'clock, we have some breaking news in Clark County. Officers are still searching right now for a gunman who killed someone in the parking lot of the Hazel Dell Strip Mall. This is near Highway 99 and Northeast 63rd Street. That's where we find KGW's Mike Benner with the latest for us. Mike? And Laurel, just moments ago, we learned that the victim in this case is just 18 years old. This appears to be connected to some sort of drug deal. The victim and suspect know each other in some capacity, so detectives do not believe that there's a danger to the public tonight. Now, this all happened around 2.30 this afternoon, so about three and a half hours ago. Witnesses recall hearing several gunshots, maybe as many as four. We spoke to a woman who works nearby. She ran out and tried to help the victim again, identified as an 18-year-old man. The woman tells us she did CPR, but unfortunately, it was too late. The victim died here at the scene. Someone needed help, and it was a bad situation. Someone had to get out there and do something. Did you hear the gunshots? I did. Yeah, it was very distinct, just pop, pop, pop. Tough evening out here for sure. The suspect uh, is believed to have left the scene in a vehicle. Anyone with information about this case is urged to contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office. Back to you. All right, Mike, thank you for that report. So there's some new charges right now against the former Kaiser Permanente pharmacist accused of recording people in the employee bathroom. Well, according now to the Multnomah County District Attorney's Office, Johnny Chan also did the same thing in the employee bathroom at the Banana Public store at Cascade Station. Kaiser fired Chan when the allegations first came out. Well, that's when Chan started working at that Banana Republic on November 26th. Investigators say Chan recorded 173 videos of 27 different victims. Three of them were minors. Chan's due back in court next week. We have new information about the officer involved shooting last Friday in a Northeast Portland Starbucks. Portland police say the suspect, 34-year-old Ryan Beasley, had a replica gun. The incident happened at the Starbucks in the Hollywood Fred Meyer complex at Northeast 30th and Widler. Officers responded just after five o'clock on Friday to reports of a man who'd gone behind the counter. He was yelling at employees. Police say Beasley pointed the replica gun at officers. Then officers shot him. Beasley survived and was booked into the Multnomah County Jail this morning. The officers who shot him are on administrative leave, which is standard procedure. A small school district in Marion County went on lockdown today. Sadly, it was because one of their students took his own life on campus. It happened at Jefferson High School at South of Salem. Arnita Melhoff has been talking with the staff there. I can only imagine what this community is going through right now, trying to understand what happened here, Nina. Yeah, it is tough, Dan. And while we tell you about this story, the most important thing is knowing how to get help. So we're posting the number to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline throughout this whole story because it is preventable. No problem is permanent. Ending a life is. It was just before 10 a.m. Students were in class. Someone called 911. A 17-year-old boy, a junior at Jefferson High School, had ended his life on a school ball field. No one else was hurt, but out of caution, the school, along with Jefferson Middle and Elementary Schools, went into lockdown. This is a rural area. 60% of kids are listed as economically disadvantaged. Just 250 kids go to the high school. Most of them know each other. We don't have a, a path mapped out forward yet. Um, we know that grief is never linear and it takes, it's a process. Um, and uh, uh, we know that our community is going to be hurting for a very long time. A crisis team came in immediately. While class will start back up again Tuesday, for many kids and certainly the family, the grief and questions as to why will last for years. Our biggest piece here is how do we stop this from happening? How do, how do we make how do we identify this behavior and stop it from happening? Marion County has been reeling from student suicide. The Statesman Journal reported on two students at nearby Sprague High in Salem who ended their lives separately this school year. Another died of suicide in 2017. Sprague's principal, who's gone through it all, is here at Jefferson helping. When you've managed um, a message as, uh, as painful as this one that no adult is prepared to have with a child, um, it helps to have someone who's who's shared that message before. Um, and so 
we've been able to support Jefferson School District through this process. We need to get better at helping people in Oregon. These stats are from the Oregon Health Authority. Suicide is the second leading cause of death in 10 to 24 year olds in Oregon. In 2016, Oregon had the 15th highest youth suicide rate in the country. In Marion County, 20% of juniors and 11% of eighth graders seriously considered suicide last year. And statewide, over 12,000 young people called the youth crisis line. All Jefferson School District uh, schools will be open again tomorrow, but after school activities are still canceled at the high school. Back to you. Yeah, my thoughts have been with that community off and on uh, all day since hearing that news. A terrible story. Eye-opening statistics, Nina. Thank you. And, and once again, if you or anyone you know might need some help, somebody to talk with, there is help always available 24 hours a day. You can always get a hold of somebody on the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. That's the number on your screen, one 800 273-8255. Again, people are there all day, every day to help. There is new information tonight on a man who died after being arrested on the PSU campus. The medical examiner has ruled 52-year-old Richard Berry died from methamphetamine and cocaine toxicity. Police took him into custody on Thanksgiving after getting reports of a man yelling and running in the streets. His death has been ruled an accident and did not have to do with the officer's involvement. In Northeast Portland today, neighbors lining up to watch crews demolish the infamous Sugar Shack Strip Club. Some people said, you know what? Looking ain't gonna get it done for me. I need to get my hands dirty. They picked up sledgehammers and they went to work knocking this thing down. Uh, neighbors worked really hard to get it out of there. They say the Sugar Shack uh, Strip Club was the center of a crime den there in the Cully neighborhood for years. It exploited women, abused women for decades. More than 140 units of affordable housing are going to take its place. Hacienda Community Development is behind that project, which they say will get started after the demolition is complete. Uh, the plan will be to develop that and then also include some kind of an outdoor gathering place. We'll know it as the plaza. And then hopefully down the road, uh, add a small commercial building so we can bring more uh, community retail services out to Cully. The former owner of the Sugar Shack Strip Club was convicted last year on charges of federal prostitution and tax fraud. Now here comes the mountain snow, and it's just in time for the holiday break for thousands of families. Yeah, many of those people are going to be traveling over the passes, Christmas gatherings, other events, lots of stuff going on. So we're going to check with Matt Safino in just a little bit. We're going to see what the weather has in store for us. But first, let's go out to KGW's Pat Doris. He's up in government camp with a look at what's going on, Pat. Well, Dan, the uh, plow operators who live and work up here watch the weather really closely. I'm sure they're going to try and keep the roads as clear as they are right now when these big storms roll through. In the meantime, the ski resorts are thrilled at the forecast, and one of them, Mount Hood Meadows, is trying a different pricing strategy. On the upper slopes of Mount Hood Meadows, skiers found fresh snow this morning. This was shot by the resort's VP of Marketing, just so you could see it. Both Meadows and Timberline are now open seven days a week. Skiers and snowboarders I met today are loving it. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Been looking forward to it all fall, so. It's good. <laughs> It'll get better and better and better, of course, but it is pretty early on for us in the Northwest. Meadows is often packed on weekends and for the first time is using something they're calling dynamic pricing. It's to encourage people to use other days. It's similar to airlines charging more for big, busy travel holidays. What we're trying to do is to get people who have the flexibility to purchase the days at the lower prices so that they can move off of those peak days. The resort wants you to go online and pick the date you want to buy a ticket, sort of like a reservation. You can see here in January, Wednesday will cost you $59, but Saturday the price jumps to $79. The more we can get people to move to the off-peak days or even off-peak time frames, come at night or come later in the day instead of having to get here at 9 o'clock, the better job we can do of managing the experience for all those people who are here on the peak days. As for the roadways, they were mostly bare today and the plows were working on the parts that were not bare. A spokesman said ODOT is working 24 hours a day now to keep up as the storms blow through. We've got crews that are working around the clock right now trying to keep these roads clear as we get more and more precipitation through the winter. Our crews train for this. They'll be out there. They're ready to go. Which will be good news for families hoping for Kodak moments like this. 
It's this little guy's first time ever in the snow. Uh, every time we here on Mount Hood, this is a great resort and uh, it's always fun. Uh, not always sunny, but today we're lucky. So yeah. great weather, good snow. That little guy was so cute. By the way, ODOT tells me they do have the authority to use salt here on Highway 26, but they probably won't this year because they don't have any place to store it. Back to you. Can't be that bad. Look, Pat doesn't even have his gloves on, or is he just tough? I can't. I can't. Oh, he's both. Yeah, <laughs> he is yeah, tough. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. You're looking forward to those Kodak moments or cell phone moments up there with your kids. My kids are only two, but we were in Texas for most of their life, so they don't have a whole lot of snow experience either. Gonna They're going to see love it. So yeah. Matt joins us now in the Weather Center. How much snow are we talking about, Matt? Yeah, get them on the snow, Dan. It's never too early. There's lots of great programs, and uh, they love it. Once you, you know, the little snowman thing going on with the, the Michelin man suit. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Fantastic. Exactly. Here's a look at Timberline right now. It's 26 up there, which is cold, um, obviously, but it's not as cold as it was last week and temperatures won't drop much overnight tonight. So there is new snow on the way a couple of times this week with a break in between. Here's our forecast for Mount Hood snow levels and snowfall tomorrow. Five to 10 inches, but that's above 6,000 feet. So the upper slopes will really reap the rewards of the system that's coming in tomorrow. Then tomorrow night, the snow level drops and by Wednesday down to 3,000 feet, a couple of inches before it shuts down Wednesday night. Thursday looks dry, but Friday looks like a banner day. Snow level climbs a bit, but even so, as we go through the weekend, a little break on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we get hammered again. So if you add this all up, on the low end, it's about 18, 19 inches. On the high end, it's upwards of 40 inches, and we'll probably be right in the middle there. That's for the next seven days, so it really does look good. Now, there'll be more snow farther north because the storms will be centered there in Washington. So four feet or so Mount Baker and Mount Rainier over the next seven days, which is great. But here in Oregon, we'll do just fine. So the headline snow level rises tomorrow. Initially, it'll be snowing at the passes later tonight, but then the snow level climbs, then it falls back down. So it's on that roller coaster up and down. Not much new snow Wednesday and Thursday, but there will be Friday and again Sunday. So a lot of good news for snow levels. Snow lovers on the way, guys. Back to you. All right, thank you, Matt. Does sound great. Coming up, the state releases its plan for when a major earthquake hits, but we all need to get ready, too. We looked at how the experts are preparing for the big one. Plus, the unlikely thief the deputies arrested thanks to a decoy package on someone's porch. So that's the Grinch. Let's look at all the good people in our community and what they've been doing. They've been helping the toys pile up at the KGW Great Toy Drive. That's the toy box right there. We still need your help. There's still time to do this. We're in the last week now to donate to the Great Toy Drive. Come drop off a new unwrapped toy at our collection event this Saturday at Clackamas Promenade from 11 to 3. Kathy Marshall and Chris Willis will be there from 12 to 2. If you can't make it to that event, though, it's okay. You can always donate a new unwrapped toy in any Regents or Wells Fargo or local Toyota de dealership.